Well, the first thing is just, you know, getting all the songs that you want to do during the week. Um, I'm thinking back probably a month ago, trying to figure out all the songs I think would be best for a bunch of guys to sing. And then to prepare our hearts, uh, typically before I go out, we do a devotion with the, I'll, I'll lead a devotion with the guys and try to, I mean, really set our minds on things above and not below. And I think, I think I've said this before, but John the Baptist had it best when he says, I must decrease, he must increase. So the, the goal for us as people who are leading music is to get the, the men to sing to the Lord. So that to me is the, it's not about my vocals. It's not about me, uh, you know, doing anything that is wowing anybody. It's about getting them to sing and how do I do that? So um, that's what I'm teaching the guys to do. When I'm picking a song or songs, uh, it's all about making sure that it lines up with scripture. As a matter of fact, a lot of times I'll use scripture uh, that will connect with a song. That's first and foremost, and I don't think, you know, as any worship leader, I would say, make sure that it matches up with scripture. Um, otherwise, you're making noise. And so that's the heart behind, I think, when even in Ephesians, and it also says in Colossians, uh, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. They're all connected uh, to what the Word teaches. That's, that's kind of my philosophy. It should be the philosophy of every worship leader. So we're here backstage, Thomas Road Baptist Church, and Dad lets me know that like, he wants me to play acoustic guitar for him, and I was just humbled and honored because I get to play with my dad and everyone thinks I'm just a shorter version of him, which is great. Um, and everyone's telling me that we're literally exactly alike. Look, there he is right there. Yeah, no, oh, he walked away. But this, He's here, here's the thing, is playing with my dad has actually become one of the most like fun things because we sometimes look over at each other. We like smile during the set. It's just like a little moment, little moments to savor. I hope we get it through the song because I feel like when I look into dad's eyes I just want to ball. It just, it's really just always special and it's cool to see him, you know, use his voice to glorify the kingdom and that just is really touching. So when I sing with him, especially in this classical operatic type voice, I just get really emotional. So it's, but it's special. It's really special. He is a friend and we've worked together for 30 years plus now. I don't do very many dates on the road, uh, mainly because I do sessions and you know, I want to be home. But uh, I always make an exception for Michael because he is a man of integrity. He loves Jesus. He loves his family. Uh, I'm not just out here uh, just playing my guitar. It, it really is uh, for a purpose and that is to see the name of Jesus spread throughout the country. Well, the Michael O'Brien experience, unequivocally, is probably one of the most godly men that walks what he says on a daily basis. In the Word of God, continually, you know, I see his heart. Um, every event we do, just, you know, it's not just getting on stage and playing music and wanting to pour into the lives of men or women or wherever, if we're at a church or if we're doing a women's event, if we're doing a men's event and always wanting to, to go where the Spirit of God is leading him. All right, it's, it's the end. It is. How are you feeling about the conference? About how it went? Um, I mean, I feel good how it, the guys engaged and they sang. And I feel like I did, I did my job. So, if they weren't singing, I'd probably be much more not happy. Much they, more than not happy. But they did a good job. I think they did a good job. And my band, once again, they're just, they're pros. And so it's great to, it's great to be alongside guys who I love and have, they have a heart for worship. And so that was fun. Good.